All right, I wanted to show you how to make the plastic liners for the, or interlining for the Beretta. Now, there's two ways to do this. One is using an iron, one is using the oven. My preferred method is using a little of both. So, first you take the bags, you spread them out, and you cut off the bottoms and the, the handles. And then you open them out and spread them flat. Now, each bag now is two layers thick uh, because you haven't cut, cut the bags open. You've just taken off the handles and the bottoms. And the number of layers will therefore be double. So if you have one bag, since it's two layers thick, um, and I, I, I call these plies, but that's probably not the right word for it. But so each bag being two layers thick, if you have three bags, you have six layers. So here I'm, I have four, four layers, so that's eight. And then I fold the bags in half, which will actually make that then 16 layers. I found that, and it's going to change depending upon your bags, grocery bags, from different stores are not the same. Some are thicker, some are thinner. Even though they're all, they're all number twos, they're still, and you can feel it. If the bag is extremely light, it's probably thinner than another one. And stick with the same bags from the same store uh, so that when you, you'll come out consistent in your, in your plastic. So you lay your, your layers down, and here I've opened them out I will fold them over later when I iron. I first I open them out, and you use two sheets of parchment paper, one on the bottom and one on top of the layers. The heat of the iron, not low, medium uh, to medium high, and you want to consistently move the whole time. You don't want it to sit in one spot, and you just go back and forth over it, letting the heat go through all of those layers. And at some point, you'll um, you can check it and see if it's melting, and they will the layers will melt together. And uh, when you've done it a few times on one side, you want to flip it over, and uh, you can either flip over the bags or you can flip over the whole package. I do both, and iron the other side, and const go back and forth like this until you get it. Um, I want to say the consistency that you want you, you till they're all the layers are fused together and you'll notice that um, the side that's up by the iron will be very flat the side that is uh, down from the iron will be crinkly and um, and it crinkles because it's letting air out because the plastic is melting and pulling together various things so when I get it to a, to um, pretty much the layers all fused, then I will fold it over in half and continue this, but now I'll be working with double, double thickness of plastic. You could use twice as many bags and leave it really large like that. But since, the since what I need is about this size, um, I fold it over and just do one at a time. So this is the, the ironing method. And once I have it folded, I'll go over, again, both sides of it to fuse both sides of the, of the plastic together. You see it's already fused, but I'll... And it's hard to tell exactly how thick it is or how and how flexible it is while it's still hot. You have to let it cool and it cools very quickly. So test it every once in a while. Stop, take the iron off, let it cool a little bit and check your your plastic until you get it. Now as fast as I pulled it off there it's already cooled a little bit and I decided it needed a little bit more 
mostly at this point it's mostly just to get any wrinkles out that I see because this is it's it's this plastic is fused if you continue to add more and more heat to it it will wrinkle up more and more so this is this looks good as to me um, and you might want at this point want to put it uh, with under a book or something to keep it flat now I'm going to show you how to do the oven method, which starts out exactly the same way. You're going to take the top and bottoms off of the bags. And then you're going to flatten them out into layers. Folding them over makes it easier cutting the top and some bottoms off. And especially if you're doing a lot of bags and as I say it takes for each one for each section it took about five to six bags so now I have them laid out and I'm just checking to make sure I have them they're all there's no folds in them and I'm taking out any of the really thin ones and then ca counting my layers I want to make I want five layers or six layers And then what you do is again you're going to fold them in half here I'm just I'm just uh, counting out layers and laying them out but um, and you can do more than one set one set at a time I have stacked them on trays on top of each other um, I have done them big like this but I found the best way I, I like them better folded over so here again I'm counting layers out and again this is folded I like I like them folded over they fit they fit nicer in the tray the weight the the weight that I put on them holds down all of the bags the edges aren't uh, sticking out so you want to make a little package like this on top of your um, parchment paper and then I'll show you how it's how I put it in into the oven here's the tray that I use and you can't put it directly on the metal tray it will stick to the metal tray you need to put parchment paper on top of the tray it doesn't matter if the parchment paper sticks out or not um, you just want to make sure that the the bags don't hit the metal uh, they will stick to metal but they won't stick to the parchment paper for whatever reason so um, so now I have tray with parchment paper on it bags folded over and there's a I'm cutting off anything that might stick out the end it'll be too thin anyway and so um, I found that these blue Walmart bags really did not do a really good job there's just too much ink on those bags but um, I'll get to that in a few minutes anyway you make your put your package down on top of the the tray then this the the um, parchment paper then your folded bags again I like five to six bags folded over and then another layer of parchment paper then on top of that parchment paper I put a tray that will fit inside the first tray 
and hold it down tightly. And then I put a weight. I use this glass um, dish on top of it. You could put, you could fill the dish with beans. You could fill the dish with cans of something or whatever. You just want weight on it. And then you just slip this whole thing into the oven, 350 degrees. I find from four to five minutes. Three was a little bit too short. Five minutes, it didn't need more than five. So just put the whole thing in the oven three, uh, four to five minutes. Take it out, let it cool without undoing anything while you're getting your next group together. Uh, let it sit that way. And then... Um, Okay, this was this is what it looks like when it comes out of the oven now. These are different what I call plies. Different layers of bags. This is these two are like 20 layers and they come out looking kind of like tree bark. They are they are um, still a little bit pliable. But I think they're too rough and too, even though it's smooth on one side, that's the side that the pan was down. Um, they, they're too thick for what I want, I think. I might use them for something else. Probably not, but um, I just want to show you the differences. All right, then this is a three, three bags, which is six ply then. Um, Actually, it would be three bags folded over. Three bags is six ply, folded over is 12. So this is 12. And this is like, almost like a padded envelope sort of thing. It's, it's strong, but it's too, it's too flimsy. So three bags is too, is too thin. Um, this is four bags which makes 16 layers this is closer to what I want and I could use this I put this in the oven I started out with five minutes but actually this was three minutes this could have been a little bit longer it's still soft on this side and that means it could it could have used another minute and I can finish this with the iron and I probably will and this is this is good um, this is four bags this is five bags. This is better. Again, uh, this was three minutes, and actually this was four minutes, and it's it's pretty good. I I think I might it's I might go over it with the iron it to flatten it a little bit more. They roll up from, once they're out of the oven. Um, when I take them out of the oven, I leave them on the counter for about a minute without taking the weight off of them. Um, that helps to keep them flat. If you take it off right away, they'll just roll up. So leave it for a minute or two till it starts to cool somewhat, and then I peel it off and let it finish cooling. So this is five bags. This is good. This is six bags. Um, six bags and five bags are just feel about the same. Um, and the reason for that is, again. All bags are not the all bags are not the same. Even though all they're all number twos, the thickness of the, the bags vary in thickness. And so you want to kind of keep bags from this. These were all the same kind of bag. So were these. These were a mixture of some of these bags and some Dollar Tree bags, which are a little thinner. So these two actually, even though this is six, these actually came about out about the same. Um, it's better to use the same kind of bag, the same temperature as 350 regardless, for the same amount of time. Check, try it with a couple of bags, try it with like four bags. Uh, if it's too thin, then up it to five. If it's still too thin, up it to six. Till you get something that you want consistent with the bags that you have. 
and try and try to use all the same kind of bag and if at all possible avoid too much ink and the reason for that is that um, if you look at them closely you'll find there's holes in them and where the holes are is where there was a lot of ink the um, the Walmart the Walmart bags the blue ones they have a tremendous number of holes and that's because that the blue is also ink uh, this was actually I had put had to put two layers one on top of the other I put one in the oven it came out it was full of holes so then I put it in on top of another group of bags that did that were not all this blue ink and they stuck together better but you still they still you could still see this huge numbers of holes through it and that's because of the ink I'm pretty sure that's because of the ink because it seems if you look at where the holes are it's where there's a, a huge amount of of ink so I'm not sure that that's the reason but I kind of think it is so so I have several sheets here I, I need four ultimately there's another sheet over here again this was this was six layers, but it's actually thinner than this than this one, and, and actually it's thinner. Th these two came about the same; they're both fives. But again, this used a lot of the Dollar Tree bags, which are thinner, and only a couple of the the grocery bags, which were a little thicker. And again, look at the large amount of holes in it, and it's right where that that ink band is in there down here around the Dollar Tree again the ink at the bottom of the bag caused lots of holes um, I think it's the problem that's the problem is with the uh, the ink so you if I mean if you have the money and you want to put out and buy um, bags that are you know just a box of bags gar uh, garbage bags or uh, waste can bags like that are all white or all black I would probably go with the all white and uh, you probably would not have so many holes and there would also be consistency in the the bags the layers so if you got something you liked you could stick with it once you find out the number of layers that are best for you stick with that the, the number of layers and the number of minutes Three to four minutes was what I was going with. Three was a little too soon. Five was okay, so it was really more four to five minutes was um, the actual numbers that that I used. So I have one, two, three. I have this one, and I have another that three ply layer. I confused these two together. So I'm going to go over them again just with some heat. Now, you don't have to do this. They're pretty flat, especially on one side, they're almost always very flat. The other side tends, this is the flatter side, this tends to be rougher. This is the side that was down on the pan. This is the side that was up, and so it. Um, pushed up against the, the, the one that was on top of it. So I'm going to go over them a, a little bit just to flatten it. And these two I'm going to fuse. Now I'm just going to go The setting on the iron that I'm using is the same setting that I do with vestments. I tried using, I mean, I've, some people have recommended doing high setting and just, um, and control the heat by moving the iron. You don't want to ever stop it, but I don't think, it, I don't see that it, a, a low setting doesn't, 
it doesn't um, heat up enough um, medium or to med medium to high anywhere in that range is fine and these won't getting they're getting warm but they're not they're not to the point they won't fuse until they get really the heat goes all the way through them because it has to get to those layers between the two. So I'll do it from one side and then I'll flip it over do it on the other side. Now I saw someone on YouTube who was ironing, ironing each, each bag flat and then going putting them together. He was he called he, almost like what I do with the metal, um, pre-shrinking them. I tried that. I didn't have any success with it. I found that it didn't make any difference ultimately in the. But. Some people, some people use cardboard in these layers, but I, as I say, I want my, I want this to be waterproof. I mean, it's tended to be a hat. A Beretta is a hat, and the priests don't wear them outside anymore. They used to. Now they're just pretty much used for the in the service in the mass at the beginning and the end, and no place else. Which is why, and because they're not around, people don't, they don't even use them for most masses. Now, I was asked by a seminarian for this. In seminaries, they may use them more. And they may actually use them as hats. So, if that's the case, let's do it right. Alright, this is fused. Not fused well. Especially at the ends. It's fused in the middle. It's fused at this end. I hope I hit it again at this end. And it doesn't matter how what it looks like because it's going to be between layers of fabric. But it, you do want it kind of smooth. You don't want it too lumpy because it's going to come through the fabric. All right, that looks that looks like it. Left to cool, that might work. Let me, let me get that out of the way, flat somewhere. While I go over some of these. These I just want to kind of flatten a little bit, so I am not going to heat them up so much that the other side starts to crinkle. I want to flatten this side. I want to keep this side flat. So this looks good. Still warm, so it's still. It's still bendable. And this one too. Don't want to heat it so much that it goes all the way through, but I do want to heat it enough that it no longer looks like it has Alright, you see one, how it wants to bend up at the edges, but we're used, going to be using the middle, so that's not a problem. And again, it, it does unbend. So that's pretty flat. And while they're still warm, if you put a book on top of them, a heavy book, that also will 
will help. And which is what I'm going to do when I finished all these. This is the last one. Okay, so put all of you together. Put some heat on you just to and put a book on you. Several books. Okay, so I've traced out using the template. I've traced out and cut out the pieces. And now I need to, to score them and fold them so that they will bend on at the areas where I, they need to bend. Um, they should be able to go flat again, but they also need to be able to bend. All right, so. So again, um, using the template, um, I'm putting this across at the the areas that need to bend, and I'm just I'm not using the sharp point of the scissors. I'm using the back of the scissors because I don't want to cut it. I just want to make a score where it will bend but not break or cut. Same with this side. And that's a little too high. It needs to go from okay, so this area here. I'm gonna bend it in both directions just so that it can bend easily enough. should be one side looks higher than the other I don't think it's going to matter all right and again it needs uh, a line across here going to bend and it also needs a line down the middle really only at the top section not at the bottom because that that is meant to come up like this and it will sort of bow just as this will bow at the bottom this will bow at the top all right so that's one two this one the same thing um, And this line should be parallel to the bottom. If I have it right. Okay, so that one, this one, this one, and again, it needs to be able to fold in all directions. the top. Alright, so. And the same with this one. does not look right. It's not, it's not high enough. That's the full, actual full line. Okay. 
Okay, so 